Greetings in the name of our Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ. For our devotions on this day of October the 7th, the commemoration of Henry Melchior Muhlenberg, pastor, we shall follow the order of daily prayer for noon on page 296 of the Lutheran Service Book. In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit, Amen. Listen to my prayer, O God, do not ignore my plea. Hear me and answer me. Evening, morning, and noon, I cry out in distress, and he hears my voice. Cast your cares on the Lord, and he will sustain you. He will never let the righteous fall. Glory be to the Father, and to the Son, and to the Holy Spirit, as it was in the beginning, is now, and will be forever. Amen. Psalm 121. I lift up my eyes to the hills. From where does my help come? My help comes from the Lord, who made heaven and earth. He will not let your foot be moved. He who keeps you will not slumber. Behold, he who keeps Israel will neither slumber nor sleep. The Lord is your keeper. The Lord is your shade on your right hand. The sun shall not strike you by day, nor the moon by night. The Lord will keep you from all evil. He will keep your life. The Lord will keep your going out and your coming in from this time forth and forevermore. Glory be to the Father and to the Son and to the Holy Spirit, as it was in the beginning, is now and will be forever. Amen. A reading from Acts chapter 16, verses 6 to 10. Paul, Silas, and Timothy went through the region of Phrygia and Galatia, having been forbidden by the Holy Spirit to speak the word in Asia. And when they had come up to Mysia, they attempted to go into Bithynia. But the Spirit of Jesus did not allow them. So passing by Mysia, they went down to Troas, and a vision appeared to Paul in the night. A man of Macedonia was standing there, urging him and saying, Come over to Macedonia and help us. And when Paul had seen the vision, immediately we sought to go into Macedonia, concluding that God had called us to preach the gospel to them. This is the word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. Henry Melchior Muhlenberg is a name largely unknown to most people today, but who has been called the father of American Lutheranism. Born in Germany in 1711, he was ordained into the office of the Holy Ministry at Leipzig, but was influenced by pietism during the time he spent at the University at Halle, a movement within the Lutheran Church which emphasized right living above right teaching, sanctification over justification, feelings over faith, one's inner conviction of the heart over the objective means of grace, the word, baptism, and the Lord's Supper. And when an appeal from German Lutheran colonists in Pennsylvania for a pastor to come and serve them reached Halle, Muhlenberg was appointed to go to the New World. In the 1856 book, Memoir of the Life and Times of Henry Melchior Muhlenberg, Patriarch of the Evangelical Lutheran Church in America, the author writes these words. He commenced his journey in the spring of 1742, passing through Holland on his way to England. In London, he met with a cordial reception from the chaplain to King George II, who greatly encouraged him to his mission and materially aided him in his object. With this excellent and faithful man, he remained nine weeks, diligently improving his time and seeking additional instruction and counsel with regard to his future duties. And on the ship from England to the New World, the memoir goes on to say, he labored to reclaim all, to instruct them in the plan of salvation, 
and to bring them to a saving acquaintance with him who is the way, the truth, and the life. In one place, in his journal, he remarks, I urged upon the English passengers the necessity of a radical change in their life by the exercise of faith in the crucified Redeemer. They all listened with attention, admitted to the truth of my statements, and thanked me for my instructions. But how difficult it is to produce upon the minds of men a permanent impression of the doctrine of regeneration. The many prejudices which darken the understanding, the strong influence of sinful habits together with riches, worldly prospects, and the cares of life are powerful hindrances along the way. And upon arriving in North America, Mueller made his way to Pennsylvania, where he soon found himself in charge of three congregations. And with the influx of more and more immigrants, he also began training less qualified pastors and helped establish new congregations in New York and all the way down to Georgia, preaching in German, in Dutch, and in English. And as a result of the transition from the State Church of Germany to the Free Churches in North America, he wrote a model constitution which is reflected to this day in many of our Lutheran congregations. As a result of the influence of traveling vagabond preachers who lacked any kind of theological training, who were devoid of any Lutheran convictions, as well as the negative extremes of pietism when it came to public worship and congregations, Muhlenberg prepared in 1748 a common Lutheran liturgy in order to preserve and to promote the teachings of the Lutheran confessions and the objective truth of the gospel, portions of which survive to this day, having come into the Missouri Synod and also as such into Lutheran Church Canada through the Lutheran hymnal and Lutheran worship, and today as the third setting of the divine service in our Lutheran service book. In the foreword to this church agenda or liturgy, Muhlenberg states that which is just as true today as it was 270 years ago, namely the maintenance of the unity among the scattered Lutheran congregations depends to a large extent upon an agreed upon common liturgy, and that the same ceremonies, forms, and words thus be used in all of our congregations. This common liturgy was received and accepted that same year at the founding of what was called the Pennsylvania Ministerium, the first Lutheran Synod in North America, which Muhlenberg himself organized and led for many years. In the early 19th century, it would be pastors from the former Pennsylvania Ministerium who would occasionally come to Ontario to serve the scattered Lutheran communities. And during his 45-year pastoral ministry, Muhlenberg also kept a very detailed journal of his travels and his service. A one-volume version entitled, The New Notebook of a Colonial Clergyman, condensed from the journals of Henry Melchior Muhlenberg. Poor health as a result of his extensive, his difficult labors forced him into limited activity and he died on this day of October the 7th in 1787, leaving behind a, an extended family whose sons were heavily involved in the American Revolutionary War, but above all, a lasting heritage, American Lutheranism. And it is indeed most fitting that today we thus thank God as we remember Henry Melchior Muhlenberg as a church leader, liturgist, journalist, and above all, as a pastor to the many congregations entrusted to his care. Amen. We continue our devotions with the Kyrie. O Lord, have mercy upon us. O Christ, have mercy upon us. O Lord, have mercy upon us. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, 
Thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, and the power, and the glory, forever and ever. Amen. Lord Jesus Christ, the good shepherd of your people, we give you thanks for your servant, Henry Melchior Muhlenberg, who was faithful in the care and nurture of the flocks entrusted to his care, so they may follow his example and the teaching of his holy life. Give strength to pastors today who shepherd your flock, so that by your grace your people may grow into the fullness of life intended for them in paradise. For you live and reign with the Father and the Holy Spirit, one God, now and forever. Amen. O God, our Heavenly Father, your servant, Henry Melchior Muhlenberg, displayed courage and perseverance in the face of opposition and slander, and brought order both in life and in worship to scattered and dispirited congregations. Give to the pastors of your church today such strength and faithfulness that the devotion of your people may be enriched and that unity and cooperation may be advanced to the glory of your name. Through your Son, Jesus Christ our Lord, who lives and reigns with you in the Holy Spirit, one God, now and forever. Amen. Heavenly Father, send your Holy Spirit into our hearts to direct and rule us according to your will, to comfort us in all our afflictions, to defend us from all error, and to lead us into all truth. Through Jesus Christ our Lord. Amen. Let us bless the Lord. Thanks be to God. The Almighty and Merciful Lord, the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit, bless and preserve you. Amen.